What's going on guys, my name is Noah and today I'm going to show you four creative ways to render wireframes in Cinema 4D and Octane Render. And don't forget to stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to show you a bonus tip that I think you're really going to love. Alright, let's get into this tutorial. Okay, so now I just jumped into Cinema 4D. I'm going to bring in my model. So I'm using this male head. The first thing I'm going to do is show you the easiest way to render out a wireframe. So if I go into my edge mode, you can see that these are the polygons that my model has. And if I wanted to just render out each of these polygons and just get a basic flat image of these polygons, what the first thing I can do is go into my render settings. With the standard renderer selected, I can actually go to effect and then cell renderer. So once you have your cell render loaded into your uh, render passes, you can actually check outline and then edges. So if you don't have that selected, it'll just show your outline. Um, and in this mode, you can actually change your colors of the edges and uh, the background or whatever. That's one way to do it. And then if we just hit render, you'll see what it looks like. Yeah, pretty basic. So if I didn't have edges selected and I tried to hit render, this is what it's going to look like. It just gives you an outline. That's the first and easiest way to render out a wireframe in Cinema 4D. No matter what geometry you have in your scene, as long as you throw on a cell render and then hit render, um, you'll get a basic wireframe, which you can then bring into Photoshop or whatever After Effects and then animate it however you want or just add some post-processing effects. So that's the easiest way. The next way I'm going to show you is a bit more advanced. So with the same model selected, I'm going to go into Startup and go to my Body Paint UV Edit. Okay, so once I'm in this screen, what I'm actually going to do is try to create a, a UV map of all of these polygons. So what I want to do first is I want to make sure that I'm in edge mode over here. Click on one edge, any edge, then just do control A on the keyboard. That'll select all the edges. Then you're going to want to go to UV polygons. Click this um, over here under UV mapping and the UV commands tab hit max UV. So then once you hit max UV, what you're going to want to do is you can exit out of here. So I'm just going to go back to my startup layout and that step is necessary for this to work. So you need to make sure that you do that before this is going to work. OK, so once I have my model selected, I'm going to delete that material that it comes with a default material. And I'm going to create my octane diffuse material. I'm going to go into the octane diffuse material, open up the node editor. I'll just make it a little bit bigger for you here. OK make it a little bigger um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab an RGB spectrum I'm going to grab two RGB spectrums actually and what these two nodes are going to do are these are going to control the background color and the actual color of the outlines so the wireframe itself so for the first one I'll just do like a basic black and white type of wireframe so this one's black this one's white that's fine Scroll down here and then what I need is a mix node. Okay, so once I grab this mix node, I can then load in these into texture one and texture two. I'm gonna scroll down. I'm also gonna need a gradient. And then I'm gonna take this gradient, load that into the amount. So this is gonna, this gradient is gonna control what the lines are gonna look like. I'll show you the benefit of doing it this way um, because you get a lot more control over the look of your uh, of your wireframe. So um, with the gradient selected, go to 2D, change this to 2D box. OK, so now this is like a representation of each of the polygons in your scene. So just to give you an idea of what this is going to look like, I'm going to hit render. I'm going to throw my material on. And right now it doesn't look like anything. So let's go back into the node editor. Let's load this into the diffuse. And you can kind of see here on the bottom right that this is what it's looking like. So each of these, each of the polygons on this uh, model is looking like this. So that's not really what we want. So what you got to do is you got to clamp down on this on this texture um, by taking this gradient slider and just sliding it all the way up. And you'll see now it's starting to look like an actual wireframe. OK, and the benefit of doing it this way um, with the shader is that you can actually control the fall off. So if you want thicker lines, you can go like that and adjust it. You can really customize it more this way. So make it thicker however you want. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. That's another way to do it. And there you go. Now, the benefit to doing it this way is that when I hit render, that's what it looks like. 
So the benefit to doing it this way over the other way is that I can actually have more geometry in my scene. Like let's just make a plane, for example. Um, go back to my object mode, bring the plane down, load that up. And um, I can just create like a completely different texture for the ground, create like a reflection there, make it look cool. Add some roughness. And I can, and then now if I hit render, let's just overwrite it, it looks like this. So it, it'll actually keep both textures. So I can do, I can mix my whole scene with wireframe textures um, and other octane materials or whatever you want. So that's another cool way of, of doing it. And there's the, a benefit to doing it each way. If you're still watching, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. All right, let's continue. The other way to do it is we're gonna take our head model I'm going to go into edge mode and now again we have all the edges highlighted but if they're not highlighted just click one and then control a that'll select everything once you have everything selected i can go i can right click hit edge to spline and then once you hit edge to spline you'll actually notice that you get a spline child of your original model so we don't really need the model anymore we just need this spline that was created so i'm going to drag that out i'm going to hide this model for now and you can see that I just have a spline of all the polygons in my scene. So that's cool, but um, we can't actually see anything yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab a sweep object, make this, make this model spline a child of the sweep, and then I'm gonna sweep geometry around it. You could choose whichever one of these you want. You can choose end side, rectangle, or a circle. I'm just gonna stick with a basic circle because that's actually gonna be with the geometry, I want round geometry. And now it looks all crazy. Things are going all out of whack. Um, and don't have no fear, guys, don't worry. We'll fix it. We're gonna go into the circle. We're gonna go to the radius. I'm, I'm just gonna do one centimeter for now. Okay, still looking a little chunky. Not really what I want. So I'm just gonna keep bringing this radius down. I'll try 0 0.5. Still a little chunky, 0 0.1. All right, that's more like what I want. So that was just because the scale is really small of the model. So that's why I have to use a really low value here. But um, you kind of just play with the radius until you look until it looks like something that you want. But essentially, that's what the radius is going to do is just control the thickness of each of these lines. So it's kind of cool. It gives it this like pipe look. If you guys follow this 3D artist on Instagram, his name is Chad Knight. He makes really cool wireframey renders using this technique. I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on that, but um, this is what he's doing. And he was making some really cool stuff out of that. Now, the benefit of using the sweep method is that you can actually control the start and end growth and animate it. So you get this really cool like animation going on where it kind of builds itself just like that. Really cool way to animate abstract splines. That's looking pretty cool already. And you can also animate the radius of the circle. So however you want to do that, bring it up. Gives it this weird abstract kind of balloon character kind of look. And that's the sweep method. Now I'm going to show you the fourth way of doing it. So I have my model. Um, we don't need to select anything actually. What we're going to do is we're going to go into our generators, go to atom array, and then I'm going to take my model and drag it into the atom array. So now it's kind of looking like, again, chunky, not really what I want, kind of weird. I don't know what's going on here, um, but I'm going to change the cylinder radius. I'm just going to bring that down. I'm going to change this to sphere radius to one. Oh, other way around actually. Sorry. I want the cylinder radius to be bigger. And I want to bring the sphere radius all the way down. So now we're getting this cool look. So these are a bunch of different ways to do sort of the same thing. The method you're going to want to use to render each wireframe is kind of based on the look you're going for. What I wanted to do was just show you the different ways I use to create these wireframes. And I'm sure there are more than just four ways. There's probably a million different ways you can do this. So if I missed any of the ways or you know another creative way of rendering wireframes or just generating wireframe geometry, let me know in the comment section down below how you would do it because I find this stuff really interesting. So, so now I'm going to show you guys how I used those different wireframe methods to create cool geometry. So here's an example of um, a render I just did. I used this 
texture method to create this wireframe texture and kind of control the colors of it. Did some of that, added some cool eyes behind to give it this like glow and the cloud to just make it overall just kind of interesting. But this is hopefully giving you some ideas on what you can do. And then I used some octane lights to creatively light my scene, just give it a bit of visual interest, some HDR eyes as well, just thrown in there um, to help with the lighting. This one, this I use the sweep method here. Again, I can control the start and end growth to kind of animate it, give it this really cool like abstract effect here. And then if you notice, I go into my camera, I actually added some depth of field just so that it can create some separation between our foreground and background, as well as some post-processing to give it this like cool bloom effect. Uh, just right here, controlled that. I think that looks really cool, really abstract and weird. All right, so if you stuck around to the end of this tutorial, I wanna show you guys a special bonus method that I use to create really abstract, cool looking geometry. So remember how we did that edge to spline thing? So I'm gonna show you a cool way to get creative with your splines. So let's say I have my head selected or I have my head model here and I'm in edge mode again. Okay, so if I go to U and then L, so for hit U on the keyboard and then L, I'll get my loop selection. And what I can actually do here is select loops of geometry here. So I can do cool things like that. And then I can do the same thing, right click, hit edge to spline. It's gonna give me a spline model, hide this. And now I have a cool looking spline that I can again, throw into a sweep, uh, throw a circle in that sweep, change the radius, bring it down because it's looking weird. Where are we? 0.1 I think it was for me. Yeah, and then I get this like cool looking geometry that I can make. As long as you have your geometry, you can use loop selections or different selection methods, fill selections, whatever, um, to create your splines and then actually sweep geometry around those splines and you get really cool abstract kind of uh, geometry happening. All right, guys. So thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more cool graphics design and artwork like this. I love doing this stuff. So thank you guys for watching and have a great one.